hello and welcome back and today I want to do a hardware review of the brand new M2D20 NVMe cache card from Synology. Now in today's video we are going to talk about what this card can do, what it can't do and hopefully help you decide whether you need this to improve your Synology system because that's what this is about. It's about future proofing, it's about lifting a glass ceiling and it's about getting more out of your NAS storage system, which may be a few years old right now, and you're looking to improve the performance internally and get more out of it for your home or business needs. Now, a few things straight away off the bat. This is not an unboxing video. If you wanna check out the unboxing video, head over to Span TV. there's a whole one right there. And the reason this isn't an unboxing video is a lot of these accessories I've already talked about, and you're gonna know what they are. They are like the heat sink, which we will talk about. There's a, a back plane that we might touch on, but the rest of it, there's more information about that in the other video. Today I want to focus on the card, because this card is really interesting. Much like the combo card when I did my hardware review of that one, this card is a very mature card from Synology. It shows that they haven't just bashed out uh, a sequel to its predecessor, the M2D18. The other thing is I generally don't do hardware reviews of upgrade cards and smaller network peripherals, largely because the people that buy these devices buy them out of necessity and there isn't a lot of range out there. The reason I'm doing a hardware review of this card and breaking that rule a little bit is because one, this is enough of an upgrade over its predecessor to be interesting and two, Synology as a brand seems to be really embracing SSD caching more than anyone I've seen and not just like standard NAS brands, I'm talking the higher tiers as well with DSM including more and more variable ways in which caching and intelligent caching is being factored in things like Synology Drive in terms of um, utilizing raw files in real time internally and the Synology 20 Plus series doing a greater job of embracing NVMe SSD caching with even the 420 and the 722 bay um, including NVMe SSD caching bays. So it, Synology is a brand that's embracing NVMe so much that I thought we should really talk about this card more because this card arrives about 200 nicker, which isn't a small amount of money. 200 quid for a device that doesn't even have the NVMe bays inside may put a number of you off. In today's video, I'm not gonna try and convince you to go for it, but I am gonna try to help you understand why it is. It's not all good and there's a few bumps on the road that we're gonna talk about later on, but let's get straight into it. This card allows you to have a system that has hard drives inside, like maybe a six bay like the 1618 or the 1819 eight bay, that's full of hard drives that kind of have a, their own bottleneck in terms of performance. The average hard drive, you know, between standard and enterprise grade will give you something like 160 to 220, 240 megabytes per second. Once you put them in a RAID, each drive will give you somewhere between 70 to like 110 megs with each additional drive, depending on the RAID volume you go for and the complexity of the enterprise nature of the drive, RPM and cache and stuff like that. Now, you're still gonna hit, even on eight bays, you're gonna get close to that 1000 megabytes per second that 10 GBE might allow you to take advantage of, but the mechanical hard drives are still gonna have lower IOPS overall and there's gonna be a lot more kind of workings inside. And as the drives get fuller and fuller, that performance may dip. Now, the reason things like this exist is because rather than try to populate a whole NAS with SSDs, which can invariably cost the moon and have a lower overall storage capacity with SATA hard drives, why, uh, SATA SSDs, what this does is let you take advantage of just two SSDs to act as a kind of buffering and assistance to the hard drive array. They uh, act as a nice extra sandbox area on the side for handling common access files, active current files, backup files, cab files, and basically giving the IOPS advantages that SSDs bring to the table and allow you, a hard drive primary user, to take advantage of them. Now you need a PCIe enabled NAS to take advantage of this and slightly more specific compatibility that we'll talk about later on but the improvements of that speed can be seen internally for the most part with some advantages externally but the external advantages always have to be taken with a pinch of salt because if you're using a nas that's only got one gbe you're still limited to one gbe at 100 or so megs you might lag a link aggregate with multiple ports but you're still only getting 100 megs each time and this device is designed to let you take advantage of super fast NVMe SSD which gives you 
um, you know, um, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 megabytes per second solid state drive storage and utilize it as caching to assist the slower hard drives. Now, as good as that all sounds, as mentioned, this PCIe can present a bottleneck because if you're using a system that doesn't have sufficient width of uh, PCIe compatibility, in this case, this is a PCIe Gen 3 times 8, so a potential 8,000 megabytes per second bandwidth connection between the NVMEs and the main controller in your NAS, if you don't have a PCIe that can support that breadth, you're going to be bottlenecked. It's backwards compatible, but you might have a CPU that doesn't support this level of NVMe gen or a PCIe bandwidth that's too narrow to take advantage of the NVMe. So do bear that in mind. And that's what I mean about the maturity of this card. It brings a lot to the table and it's very, very future proof, but it's very much future proof from the current and maybe previous gen. A lot of the 2018 series disk stations with PCIe slots, the 18, um, sorry, the 16, 18, the 18, 19, those NASIs support this card. But the ones prior to that, less so. So do bear that in mind. Uh, on the subject of maturity, we can talk about those M2 NVMe bays. You may notice they're particularly long. This card supports up to the 22110 length NVMEs. They present two main advantages. Standard NVMEs currently, uh, the Seagate Iron Wolf series of NVMEs there, these give you like 2,500 megs uh, read-write in a caching environment, and they can, can give you a lot more than that in particular usage environments of read-only or write-only caching in different kinds of file types. PCIe Gen 3 times 4 remember to make sure your NVMEs and card are um, compatible PCIe. Uh, the speed that those NVMEs can give you, even at that length there of 2280, does come with one problem. The majority of NVMEs at that length only go up to about 4 terabytes. Now, 4 terabytes seems like a lot. You might put 2 in there. Boom! 8 terabytes. But, if you're utilising this cache card with 2 NVMEs, chances are you're using read-write cache. That means you're making a RAID 1, which will effectively half your read-write storage potential. So that means you're only going to have 4 terabytes of storage. Now bear in mind, your system should have 10% of the storage, 10% um, cache against that hard drive storage. So if you've got 10 terabytes, you need one terabyte of NVMe cache storage to really complement it. And you can scale that, it's not a perfect algorithm, but it is comparable. So the minute you go to 40 terabytes or bigger, 40B is just not gonna cut it. And bear in mind, you still have to pair them. Bear in mind, you can now get NVMEs at that length at 8 terabytes, but they use QLC quad layer cell NAND, which is lower in performance and in read-write capabilities. Synology have their own range of SSDs, I'm pleased to say, and their NVMe and SATA SSDs are high grade. They are enterprise grade, comparable to the top end Intels with a very good data rights per day, as well as terabytes written. But they're very, very expensive, so do bear that in mind. If you are using them in the Synology, it makes a lot of sense to use them, but if you're not um, going to, you know, you're leveraging your costs right now, rather than buying a new NAS and you're going for upgrades, maybe you won't consider them for this. But the reason I bring up the length issue, or not even issue, I should say factor, is those 22110 NVMEs there, they give you the ability to have one of two options. One, much, much bigger storage. With uh, 22110, you can effectively double the amount of storage potential and get some of those 8, 12, 16 TB NVMEs open to you. Of course, it's NAND dependent. But that also means you can get f much fuller length NVMEs with just 4 TB, sure, but get better quality NAND. MLC, TLC NAND, TLC 3D NAND at that length and still get 4 TB. The cost is ultimately the same, but you're going to get better performance rather than things being squished into those smaller capacities there. Now, it will differ on the storage that you need compared to the hard drives you're complementing, but that is still very, very advantageous. On top of that, with the PCIe bandwidth there at the bottom, it means that you can get that speed that better NAND on those bays are able to present to your system. Now, there is a dedicated heatsink there to the system's controller, and there is cooling there built into that ventilation slot there. So the ventilation, even the full length one, has ventilation, something its predecessor, the MQD-18, did not have. On top of that, you've got this huge heatsink here and those silicon pads that go on the base of the device with this adapter going here, allowing you to have that full 
heatsink covered card. And this card does bring a lot to the table in terms of overall performance. And if you are looking to upgrade your internal speeds and you have a PCIe Gen 3 slot, this is largely a no-brainer for 200 NICA once you look at it in those terms. It also has five years of manufacturer's warranty, which again, glass ceiling and future proofing. Now, it's not all perfect. I mean, first and foremost, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that you can't utilize these NVMEs for raw storage. They're only for caching. And I get why Synology did that. They're really pushing intelligent background caching for things like um, that uh, hybrid share that they're working on at the moment for DSM-7 and all of that file pinning and background intelligent caching of background processes and more on Synology NASes in DSM-7. But people want to be able to use these NVMEs. And yes, NVMEs on their own without the 10 GBE like you would find on the E10 M20 card may seem a bit of a no, you know, a bit silly given that you're only going to see that performance internally. But a number of you who are going to be running VMs, a number of you that are running intensive containers or micro uh, VMs and micro containers that you want lots of them running at once, and particularly those that are using rack mount systems that are either SATA or SAS by architecture, would love to be able to add to NVMe raw storage and that's one of the things i don't like about this card the fact that it limits you to that now i can see why synology have made that choice and there are modders online that have found ways for users to be able to access the nvme on these devices and on the likes of the 918 for raw storage but they're not foolproof the minute you update your system they're gone and if you reboot your system they're probably gone as well so i wouldn't risk it personally i hope synology change their tune on the nvme support but I can't see it happening. Otherwise, it's a very, very good card. You can spend another 60, 70 quid and get the 10 GBE and NVMe version of this card. It's got the same PCIe slot, so it's still sharing all those assets, but it's still a damn fine card. And for that much of a price difference, if 200 seems like a no-brainer to you, then definitely look at that other card as well. We've done a whole video and a review in the description, hopefully to that, if you check it out. But this has been my hardware review of the, e, oh, sorry, the M2D20. I do hope you check out my um, performance benchmarks of this uh, card utilizing these NVMe SSDs combined with the DS1618 and some Seagate Iron Wolf drives. It's coming very soon. Otherwise, click like if you enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more. Visit the links in the description, and I'll see you next time.